Thank you, Terry, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for in, in, uh, spending your time uh, to learn about what is happening on this uh, pressing issue. I appreciate my um, associates, um, Tiffany Young, uh, Councilwoman um, uh, from uh, District 7, and Ricky Callahan, who represents Southeast Dallas and uh, the Pleasant Grove area, uh, for being here and taking their time to making this an um, uh, important issue on their radar screen. You know, Terry, I, I, didn't, I didn't know about this issue. I will tell you, uh, as, a, as a leader, you better be a learning leader because information is coming at you all the time. And when we created the Task Force on Poverty, I asked the question, why? Why uh, is, does our city have such a propensity of children growing up in poverty? And one of the question, the answers back that came back on the why was this issue. And so it is an important strategic issue for the city, but it's also a personal issue. Uh, today, uh, I kicked off our mayor's summer reading challenge, which by the way, if you read 20 minutes a day all summer, you could win pancakes with the mayor, okay? <laughs> So <laughs> we, we're, we're going. We're going to get these kids reading. We've been doing it for some years, and it's so much fun. And so we had the students from Owen Roberts there and saw these girls and boys from second grade to fifth grade. And I realized I was coming to talk to you today about this issue. And I looked out over that little group of students sitting there, Indian style, you know, listening to us talk and, and, and laughing at Mavs man and Rowdy. And I realized that so many of those little girls, it was a high chance of them being pregnant in just a few years. And it really said, oh my goodness, we can talk about reading all we want. And if this is an issue that they come up, you know, uh, and, and, and it faces them, it's going to change their lives. And so I think we have to kind of look at it that way. We have to look at it as a big issue and as a personal issue today. But as we, as we talk about childbearing and what's happening in Dallas County, the numbers are just shocking to me. In Dallas County alone, Zach knows this, nine teen girls have a baby every day, okay? Every day, nine teenagers have a baby every day. That's equivalent to having 3,000 teens a year having a baby. Now Mississippi doesn't have that many babies in one year a whole state, and we've got a county. The teen birth rate for girls from 15 to 19 in the United States is about 2%, okay? About 22 and 1,000 girls. Texas is almost 35 in 1,000, you know. And we're fifth in the nation. But Dallas County is 40 girls in 1,000. So it is remarkably more intense and a bigger problem right here. We have about three zip codes in the city of Dallas where the teen birth rates are similar to Gambia and Somalia. These are third world conditions, and we can get you there in about 10 minutes once we get our valet, okay? <laughs> right here in our city. A teen girl in those same zip codes has, has a high chance of giving birth before 19 
and will never attend college. The teen birth rate in Dallas County is 76% higher than any place in the country, uh, than the rest of the country. And I'm so proud of the work that Interrupt is doing, convening this issue to shine a light on it. I didn't know it. I learned this in the last 12 months. And as I think about the issues of these kids growing up in poverty, about one in three children in Dallas County live in poverty. Now, what is that? Just give you a sense of that. It's a family of four is a level of 24,600. Family of four living at that level, one out of three kids grow up in that. So we have a serious issue as we're looking at long term for Dallas. We have a, um, a spiraling down problem and a income gap that gets bigger and bigger. And so how do we deal with that? Well, that's one of the reasons we started the Mayor's Task Force on Poverty to kind of deal with these issues. But it's not just a citywide problem, it's a local problem. Ms. Young's zip code, 75215 in the Fair Park area, the average income is about $25,000. I mean, you know, when you think the teenage birth rate there is one in 10. So we've got poor young women that grew up in poverty, having babies, and the chance of them pulling out of that, that income spiral is huge. On the boys' side, we know what happens to most of the boys, not most, but a great propensity of them, is they'll end up in prison. And it's a sobering issue as we sit and think about the future of Dallas. So again, thank you to Interrupt for what they're doing. Uh, I was sobered by even addressing this issue of poverty because it's sort of like solving world peace, you know? It's like everybody wants to work on poverty. We don't need poor people, do we? All right? And so it's like, where do, we, where do you start on this? And I'm a big believer in education, that education is the, is, the, is the bridge that gets you out of poverty to the next level. And I believe in early childhood, all the, the efforts that Early Matters is doing is remarkable. We're getting those kids into pre-K and they're, they're ready to kindergarten. They're ready to learn if you get them at the age of three and four. And so you start to dial this thing back. And then I open a closet and said, they're coming out faster than we can educate them. <laughs> and you just go, what are we going to do about this? So I appreciate all the work on so many poverty issues we have. But we've got to kind of step back and look at some root causes from a societal standpoint in dealing with this issue. So uh, we've talked about how we best do this, and that is going to be the challenge. The great news is we've started. You've already been working on this. You've convened already these people that are interested on this issue. Thank you for sharing best practices in Milwaukee and other places about what is, uh, how can we approach this. But for me, we've got to approach this sort of the way Dallas approaches things, okay? By taking it seriously, by convening uh, those people that are going to commit significant resources, significant intelligence, significant elbow grease to this, put a plan together, work on that plan, and have a sense of urgency to get it done very quickly. That's usually how we've attacked issues, and I think we're pretty good about it. So it's not, 
it's, it's not something we can't do, but it is, a, it is a difficult issue. I suggested that we've got to move from, from this form to plan creating and getting the right people along with me that kind of bring the level of consciousness across the city on this, and I've committed to being a partner in doing that. But I think we should talk for a moment that this is a little sense of issue, isn't it? Especially for a man. I could, I, I, I was telling you, I felt okay on domestic violence, okay? Because I could talk to men about stop hitting women, okay? You just don't do that. You're not cool, you're not a man if you do that. Now we're getting a little personal, okay? When we talk about having sex and having babies and how do you treat young women when they, they're pregnant and how do you approach this in schools and how do you approach this in churches and how do you approach this at homes and so it is a sensitive issue but I will tell you I think for too long obviously nobody's talked straight about this nobody has talked to sixth graders and said no mas on this we're not going to do this you're going to become 21 and have a chance to have a, uh, your choices about reproduction yourself as a young woman and find somebody you love and have a life and not be in a situation where you're forced into a life-changing experience. Now, I don't know how to do this yet, okay? I don't. And we've got a lot of smart people in the city and we can, we can figure it out but we can't pussyfoot about, around about it. We're going to have to deal with this um, in, in, at the church level. We're going to have to deal with this at the school level. The schools are going to have to step up. We're going to have to do this in the government side. Okay, and everybody, it quickly becomes political, doesn't it? The social politics of this get real scary. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say what the answer is. I'm saying that we've got to all be together trying to find common ground to end this. But I do believe if we um, expose this issue and we take it local and we take it personal and we're not afraid of conflict, this is something to do. It's, it's a, it's a cultural change, obviously. It's a culture change that needs to take place. And we need, we need to not blame anybody. We just need to take accountability ourselves and work through this. So that's my testimony, okay, that I'm kind of converted on this, okay, that this is, uh, we can do all the, the ordinances around City Hall we want about different things, and we fight about a lot of stuff, okay? But if, if we're going to have this many babies having babies in this city, we're doomed for failure. So thank you for having a sense of urgency already on this. Sign me up, and we're going to work together to address it. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's a brave man. All right, so um, 